not good. Short right. Again. Like it. And that will do. I'm gonna give you three tips that you need to be doing with your irons to make sure that you're hitting better iron shots, more greens, better strikes, more distance. Let's have a look at the first one. Number one is all about actually your alignment and how you square the blade up. What I see from a lot of people when I'm giving lessons is that it's so simple that if you watched a pro versus an amateur, the pro gets it right pretty much 99% of the time as where the amateur might be like 50%, might be 40% of the time. And what I'm talking about here is how we line this leading edge up. If you look up here for me, I've got my target now, which is the center of the green. And what I would want to do is make sure that I'm getting my blade parallel to that target line, because what I want to see is that the middle of my club is now looking straight down my target line. But what I see a lot of people do is they sort of grip the club not really being aware of where the leading edge is. And then they try and figure it out as they then put the club in. So then they try and square this club up and then the grip isn't right. So what I want to make sure that is happening is that A, when I go to actually grip the club, I've got to get that face square as I do it. I don't want to see it open and I don't want to see it closed, then try and change it once I've gripped it. Get that face square, then take your proper grip and then from there, as we put it in now, and if you come in close here with this yellow cane, what I'm able to see is when I've got it nice and square, we can see it now matches my centered line there. What it isn't doing is sitting really open to it or it isn't sitting really close to it because even if we just think of this face being a little bit open or a little bit closed, as that starts to change, when we get further out there, that distance and direction is really gonna be off there. So we've got to be aware of that one. So as I stand in, I wanna make sure that I've got a nice square club face here. And from there, I can pull the trigger, hit my shot, and I should hopefully find that it's somewhere near the green. So on the green there, with just a simple tip of making sure you get that alignment right. Real easy to do, just check it next time you're out hitting an iron. Okay, tip number two is all about your wrists and a little bit of weight transfer. Let's take a look at that one. One of the common things that I see from a lot of golfers that they don't do is actually set the wrists in the correct manner. Now, when we're hitting iron shots, we need to have the hands in front of the club head to deliver that ball, then turf strike. So here's a little drill that I want you to do. Real simple, an old peg. What are these even called, the clothes peg? Get one of these and bang it just at the bottom of your shaft like so there so it's in line with the club face like this from there then what i want you to try and do once you've taken your setup what i see from a lot of people when i'm giving lessons is that as they take the club back when the lead arm is getting to parallel what i see a lot is that this t is still pointing up towards the sky even some cases it's actually pointing almost out backwards as where what we want to try and do to create the angles to give us that good strike we need to get some leverage we need our wrists to be involved so place a club one of your other clubs about a foot behind your golf ball and that's going to be running down your ball to target line here from there then what we want to try and do is as i'm working my club back and it goes along the club here and starts to work inside i want to as i get to the point where my left arm for me as a right-handed golfer is level with the floor i want this t uh, sorry this turn little peg now to actually point in towards my body what i don't want to be doing is going nothing 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 then try and create it because what happens as well on the way down is people throw the peg very early and that leads to this poor little scooping motion. What we wanna try and do is get it looking into our body and then on the downswing, keep it looking into the body. And then when we get to where our hands are somewhere near the middle of our chest, that's when we start to release it. That's gonna help us give us that crisp strike. So a few little rehearsals, we'll see. Up, set the peg up and set the peg. From there then, just hit maybe a three quarter one, 
feeling that you're getting that little set of the peg and a beautiful little crisp strike there and even with a shorter one that has actually gone 165 yards carry with me feeling that I'm just chipping my six iron. So you can imagine if I bring that into my full swing, I'm gonna to start to see that I'm getting a lot more power. Stage two of that, like I say, we need a little bit of weight transfer. Real handy tip, get a tennis ball, cut it in half there. It's gonna serve as a little bit of a pedal for us. What we want to try and do is that once we take our setup, we're gonna try and get pressing on the pedal in the downswing. So take your normal setup, then apply the pedal under your front foot, because what I would see from a lot of people, when they've not hinged it and they start to throw it early, they actually work onto the back foot and try and get a little bit scoopy. Again, we don't want that. What I want you to do is feeling that you get your hinge and then to start your downswing, I want you to press the pedal. So you're going to feel that you're actually pressing that down into the ground. Then we turn the body and unload the T-peg as the final bit. And that's going to get a great weight transfer. It's going to get us using the angles at the right time and it's going to get that strike. So a couple of rehearsals without the golf ball, hinge it, press it, release it. Real simple. That's the sequence we want. Hinge it, press it, release it. And from there, we're going to get that crisp little strike. So let's just give that a go. I've got my hinge. I've got my press. Wasn't enough press there. That wire was a little bit skinny. So we'll hit one more. I'm trying to feel it. But even there, that's not actually a bad shot for a little chip. But I've got to make sure that I'm really feeling that I shift that weight down into the pedal to make sure that I've got a good weight transfer. So good setup, hinge it, press it. That's more like it, Matt. Oh, and even there again, three quarter shot. I'm getting pretty much all the way up to the green just by getting some good connections there. Let's take a look at the third and final thing that I want you to be doing. Third tip, guys, if I hit the green here as well, I want you to hit that little sub button for me. And there's a reason for that all to do with tip three. Oh, I mean, if I get a hole in one, look at that, beauty. Absolute little beauty on the green, hit that sub button for me. So tip three, I've just hit the green there because I actually understand my own performance. When I play with a lot of golfers and when I'm teaching a lot of golfers, they don't quite understand what they do out on the golf course. So majority of golfers, actually 47% of golfers, miss greens short right because generally we see that the majority of people have a slice. Now, if you've got a slice, it's gonna take some yardage off your shot. So for me, when I'm here, I've set this at 190. If I hit my slice, I'm gonna actually have to hit my six iron about 200, 210 to get all the way up to that 190 because it's working from left to right and that's gonna take distance off it, which a lot of golfers don't equate for. The best seven iron you probably hit Hit, when you think of it actually probably went pretty straight it was really well struck it wasn't that one that was a little bit scruffy and had loads of shape on it so when we get out onto the golf course for us to try and hit more greens here we've got to be aware of our average performance and using things like a launch monitor going seeing a pga pro who has one of those and actually getting some numbers of how far you hit things and actually working on your golf swing will be a big one but then also tracking your average performance so things like the shot scope you can actually get the tags in the end of the club and see how far you hit the uh, golf ball over X amount of rounds and give you a true distance. Because if I stand here now and I've got the flag at 190 and I hit a bit of a okay mediocre strike with a bit of a high slice on it, I would imagine it's going to fall short. And we see there it was actually not a bad strike, wasn't the worst, but it's come down drastically short all because I thought oh I'm going to hit it straight so take into account actually how far you are hitting it and then maybe work against that shot that you've got so if you are missing it short right and you think it's a six iron maybe take your five iron and play towards the back left corner of the green because then if you do even get that little bit of left to right on it 
it's falling back towards the flag so for me I'm trying to work on just maybe a little bit more of a draw not letting that happen so I know here at 190 in the sim I can get a six iron to do that comfortably but I just want to get that little bit of draw so I'm going to play up the middle to slightly left and allow myself to get the draw and it felt a little bit drawy oh it's good it's good oh, just missing the edge of the green but I've fought against what I would naturally do so be aware of that when you're out on the golf course how far do you actually hit the golf ball is it your best shot you're actually working off or is it your average shot because if you do that you couple together some good address positions we get that good hinge and that press we're going to see that you're hitting better irons guys hope you've enjoyed the lesson and i'll see you in the next one